How much is your liberty worth to you personally? I'd like to think that I value my liberty a great deal, and if your liberty means as much to you as it does to me, then chances are high that for the most part you try to remain within the law. Occasionally people do break the law, uh, sometimes in minor ways and sometimes in major ways, and most of us have broken the law in minor ways at some point in our life. I don't know very many people who have ever driven a motor vehicle who have never ever driven above the speed limit. Uh, I know plenty of people who smoke marijuana recreationally. Uh, both of those activities are minor transgressions of the law. And how do I assess them to be minor? Well, the punishments are minor. We tend to have a gradient in terms of punishment and in terms of how we see various different crimes. Breaking the law all by itself, the principle of breaking the law, doesn't seem to be sacrosanct because if it was, then you could make a case for having the same punishment for any transgression of any law. But we don't do that. Punishments are more or less severe depending on the severity of the crime in question. For example, if you get caught speeding in your car, uh, depending on how far above the speed limit you were going and how many times you've had this kind of thing happen before, you'll pay a particular penalty. Um, but what if someone physically assaults you? They kick your ass and you have that person arrested and they get convicted in court for assault. Should it be taken into account the severity of the assault? I think it should be. So, therefore, it stands to reason that if you get your ass kicked but you walk away with no broken bones or lost teeth or anything like that, that the punishment would be less severe than it would be if you had your knees broken and your teeth knocked out. Right? But let me ask you this. How much of someone's liberty do we take for beating you up? How do we make that assessment? How do, you, how do you judge how much of someone's life you exchange for your peace of mind? Because if we give them 48 hours in a holding cell, is that sufficient? Is two weeks in jail sufficient? Six weeks, six months? What's the appropriate punishment for assaulting someone? And how do we make that determination? You see, not everyone's liberty means the same thing to them. I'll give you a real life example. Uh, recently, I re-pierced a woman's lip right here, here in my body piercing studio. And I asked her why she had to take the piercing out and she said that she took it out for prison. And I joked to her and I said, oh, that must explain why I haven't seen you around for a while. And she said, yeah, I've done six months inside. And I asked her how she found life inside. This woman, by the way, is about 21 years old. And I asked her how she found life inside. And she said it wasn't as bad as she thought it was going to be. And that if it wasn't for the fact that she missed her daughter, who was two years old, um, she wouldn't have found jail very bad at all. And she openly admitted to me that it didn't put her off committing the crime. In other words... Her crime was to glass someone in the face in a nightclub. That person now has permanent scars across their face. And she said she would do it again if she was pissed off sufficiently, knowing that if she did so, she would probably face an even stiffer sentence for having done it a second time. Her only regret being that she didn't get to see her daughter while she was inside, but she got custody when she got out. Now, was six months of this woman's freedom an appropriate punishment for scarring someone literally for the rest of their life? You could argue yes, you could argue no. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just an example. I can tell you, though, that uh, for me personally, six weeks inside of jail would seem like a nightmare 
to say nothing of six months. I value my freedom and my liberty so much that I, I, I can't even stand the idea <clears throat> of going to jail for any significant amount of time. Now, that's because my liberty means something to me. I don't want to be told what time to get up, what time to go to bed, what I have to eat, when I have to eat, and how to fill the hours of my day. I want all of those decisions to be mine and mine alone. And the idea that I have to do what I'm told is horrifying to me. So, for the most part, like you, I'm sure, I try to stay within the law. Now, my friend Grappling Ignorance did a wonderful video yesterday called Crime and Punishment, where he addresses some of these questions and makes some pretty pertinent points as well. I'm going to link his video in the description box below. But how do we assess what is the appropriate punishment for a particular crime? And we need to talk a little bit about the nature of punishment itself. Because are we punishing someone in order to deter them from committing the same crime again? If that's the case, then it stands to reason that some effort at re rehabilitation should be made during incarceration. Just incarcerating someone with no attempt at rehabilitation, to me, seems like pure retribution. And retribution may be an aspect of justice, but I don't think it's justice in itself. Um, Norway has what by most Western standards are uh, a pretty cushy prison system. Many of their prisons have saunas and uh, game rooms and uh, so forth. And I could be wrong, but if memory serves me right, I think you, no crime gets you more than, I think, 21 years in prison in Norway. And of course, you can have your sentence extended, um, but generally speaking, people don't go to jail for very long, and the time that they spend in jail isn't extremely unpleasant. Now, the recidivity rate in... Uh, Norway is 20%. That's one in five people who go to prison end up going back to prison. In the United States, where the prison system is relatively harsh by comparison, I could actually say very harsh by comparison, conditions in prison are rough and sentencing tends to be more stringent and less forgiving. And the uh, reoffending rate in the United States is somewhere around 60%, which is three out of five people who go to prison end up back in prison at some later stage. So the question of what is appropriate punishment is not straightforward because if we're punishing people purely for retribution, then I can see an argument for making the punishments extreme. If we are sending people to prison because we want to cure society of the ills of crime, then the Norwegian example seems to me a little bit more reasonable. But again, none of these questions are straightforward. Let's go back to the example of assault. If someone assaults you and we make a determination about how much of your liberty to exchange for that, how much of the assaulter's liberty to exchange for that, I should have said. Um, then we sort of have a gradient, don't we, uh, between what we call lesser crimes and greater crimes. They tend to have lesser penalties and greater penalties. But as my example with the woman who glassed someone else in the face will show, criminals will sometimes assess the risk of what the penalty will be and decide that the benefit of getting away with the crime is worth taking the risk. It's the same kind of uh, analysis people do when they drive over the speed limit in their car or smoke a joint or whatever. You're doing the crime assuming that you're not going to get caught, but that if you do get caught, you're willing to pay whatever the penalty is. So it stands to reason that maybe the penalties should be way out of proportion to the crime. 
in order to be a deterrent. But if you take that logic to its extreme, then you could have the death penalty for parking tickets. And clearly, society can't function like that. So how do we assess what punishments are appropriate for what crimes? And what is justice? Retribution, rehabilitation, uh, all have to play some kind of part. But how do we find the balance? These are really important questions, and I think they need to be addressed with every new generation. I look forward to a robust discussion in the comments section below, and I want to thank Grappling Ignorance for his very thought-provoking video. I'll link it in the description box if I didn't already say that. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.